Alrighty, it's been a while, uh, but I figured I'd give an update. Got my car back from the body shop. Don't mind Dick Dog. Um, looks gorgeous. Get everything back together, harness, uh, fuel system, brakes, rear end, steering, suspension. All that's pretty much in place now. I'm waiting to finish up the interior until I got the powertrain installed, which brings me to the topic at hand. So yesterday I installed this bad boy. Um, God damn, talk about a tight fit. I mean, uh, this thing just barely fits in here. Uh, once it clears the shock towers, it gets a lot better. It's not near as tight. It looks worse than it is now. But when you're raising it in there, I had to pull the uh, first three coil packs off on this side. And yeah, I mean, it's just basically lowering the body over the powertrain an inch or two at a time and checking everything so it clears. Um, everything seems to fit pretty well. Like I said, it's pretty damn tight. Uh, I actually had gobs of clearance up front for the fan. I was more worried about that than anything. But uh, the, really the only things I am still dealing with are the wiper motor, which is just barely touching the uh, coolant crossover block that I have. Ironically, this aftermarket one I bought that lets me relocate the supercharger cooling hoses to the driver's side, so it's a cleaner install for me. And also alleviate some uh, issues with the temp sensor that used to be at the back pointing straight backwards is actually a little thicker on this side. And I think that's now causing this problem. So had I known, I would have uh, had that custom machine down a little bit more. So I might have to do that, but I'm not lowering the engine back out. If anything, I think what I'll have to do is pull the uh, blower off. But we're going to see how bad it's contacting once the engine's moving and settled in. I mean, front to back movement, it's going to be minimal at best. It's going to torque. So, uh, yeah, hopefully the uh, wiper motor never fails because that's going to be a real pain to change now. Um, what other issues? I'll probably have to do some massaging in the trans tunnel when I reset the motor mounts months ago. Uh, naturally, I lost a little bit of clearance. I have it. It's not contacting anything, but it's, it's probably it's less than a quarter inch. It's too close for comfort for me. So um, I'm going to do that without lowering the trans, I think I can get in there with uh, some wood and a, you know, some short pry bar to bend the tunnel up where I need to, but that's not a big deal. Uh, what other issues did I run into? Steering shaft, for whatever reason, I don't know if I can see it, probably not very well here. For whatever reason, it's lightly contacting the header pipe. So these are two inch primaries. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Um, I actually welded these mounts in offset just to hear more than what altercation normally does because I had to install these from uh, my previous setup anyways and I was really paranoid about clearance here so the whole engine's maybe I don't know quarter half inch over to the driver's side which should have helped that clearance so it's not that um, I think what I'm going to try to do is loosen the uh, three bolts on the steering column and uh, See if I can shift it over enough so I don't have to do a major surgery or anything to the steering shaft setup. Um, what else do I got going on here? So this is kind of a mess, but I have it all figured out. I'll do an update once I have all the plumbing to show you what I did. So far I have a molded hose I chopped to get this uh, heater control valve off and I'll eventually mount it up over here so it's out of the way. There's just too much going on over here with the AC lines, heater lines, uh, PCM wiring and everything else. I It'll be a mess. It'll be a jigsaw puzzle if I keep it too close. So I'm going to relocate it over here and use another molded hose to connect it and sweep back. So the heater hoses, I am really glad I put that on first before I set this in because there is really no good way to get back at these um, once it's in the chassis. I mean, if you had a lift, it might be better because you might be able to get it from underneath. But yeah, I don't envy anyone trying to do this after the fact. So definitely install those first. Um, other gotchas. So I ordered this Frostbite radiator, radiator for uh, Gen 3 Hemis, and it has the, uh, what do you call it, the radiator hose connections on the right side for damn near every other application other than the Hellcats. The Hellcats naturally relocated the uh, lower radiator hose connection to this side, and naturally on the radiator. It's on the side every other Gen 3 Hemi is on. So really what I should have had is a radiator for a big block application, I believe. Um, I'm just going to make, 
I'm going to fabricate something. I'm not getting a different radiator set up. It took way too long to get the one I got. I already spent a shitload of money on it, and I'll lose it if I sell it. So, And I have tons of clearance here, so I'm just going to fabricate something, have it zigzag over. Shouldn't be a big deal. Other gotchas, both connections on these engines are one and three-quarter inch. The top is not one and a half like most applications, so something to be aware of. Um, oh, for a supercharger cooling system. So I mounted this. Can't really see it. There you go. This big ass LTR up front. See how it's installed. I have my connections there. They both kind of zigzag. So this one goes down to the pump, which is right here in the fender well. So the hose actually routes through one of the uh, factory cam bolt access plates for the upper control arm. So I use some molded hoses, uh, I have part numbers if needed, to fabricate that and have it zigzag over. The outlet, as you can see, goes underneath the bumper and then back up to the LTR. And then following the hoses back, here's the cold hose from the LTR. Kind of goes underneath the master cylinder, line lock proportioning valve and hydro boost, comes back up. And then obviously the upper one's your outlet, which is your hot uh, supercharger coolant hose. And that zigzags up over here where I have this uh, Y pipe, just like the factory setup, where it goes in the reservoir before it goes back into the pump. So uh, last thing down below, figured I'd do this now because once the valence is back on, you're not really gonna be able to see anything. So. I obviously had to make room for everything that's mounted up front for the supercharger, so my horns are relocated here. Uh, this is a factory Hellcat oil cooler. I did paint it black. And these are the factory size Dash 12 lines, which are huge, but that's what they use. And I'm sure they use it for a reason. So this one's just a conventional 45 flare. This one to clear is a direct thread O-ring boss fitting. And then I have these wrapping around here. I I uh, mocked this up before, and it's tight, but the valence should fit, so hopefully that's still the case. Um, yeah, so it just kind of wraps around the front of this uh, K member, and then let's see if I can get a better view. You can see it goes up to the oil filter housing where there's two more of those 45-degree uh, direct fit fittings. So it's tight, but it all fits. Hopefully I'll have this thing running soon. Stay tuned.